Uh, okay, I'm gonna try and make this video again for the third time. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about sheetrock, but I'm gonna talk to you not so much about installing sheetrock. There's all kinds of videos about that. I'm gonna talk to you about the pre-process, little tips that'll save you some real aggravation further down the line. Hopefully it will, so here we go. Hey guys, I'm gonna mix in some video from the other day before the sheetrockers got here. They're actually over there working. It's Saturday, they're over here working. Um, some of the tips I'm gonna give you is about taking photographs of the skeleton before the drywall goes up. Um, there's a bunch of plumbing, electrical, and all kinds of stuff that's getting ready to be covered up, and you need to take pictures of every single wall and every single ceiling that's going to have um, sheetrock on it so that you know structure you what's, what's under there. Second tip is going to be stud plates. I'll show you the stud plates that you want to put in. I'm putting in over all electrical and all plumbing because I had an incident in this house where we had one. They didn't put stud protectors on the backside wall and one of the nails in the bathroom actually hit plumbing and they had to take that whole wall down of um, shiplap and take it down and repair it. Uh, lighting, specialty lighting before they cover it up, like my can lights in there. The can light has a little switch that's about to be covered up. That is a Kelvin switch. Do I want my lights 2700 or 5000? I got to make that decision before they cover that up because I may not be able to get to it. Uh, specialty tools. If they're, you're going to have the majority of time, if you're doing a larger product, you're probably going to have a subcontractor come out and do this. You're going to have someone that's a sheetrock expert come out and do it with all this specialty stuff. I ain't doing that myself. So I've got a crew out here. So I will tell you, uh, there are some things I told them not to cut my can lights. This is a can light cutter from Lowe's. Um, it costs 39 bucks and you may only use it a couple times in your life, but man, what a great tool to have. So this is expandable. So I use pancake lights and those pancake lights need a six inch hole. So I'm gonna cut it myself. I don't want them cutting it because they, they probably don't have one of these. They'll use a saw, I wanna use this. Uh, what else? The other tip I'm gonna give you. Now I've been dealing with remodels new construction redoing we took this whole house back here we took this down to two by fours spent a year and a half remodeling that and i used a general contractor on this down at the beach house i did a lot of the work myself and i can tell you now that the majority of the crews that come out to your house whether it's roofing painting drywall sheetrock um, whatever it is even framing more than likely there's a good chance those crews are going to be hispanic there's usually a person on site that speaks enough English that you can get it across. However, um, as an example, there are two guys that were brothers that are out here working, and then one of them, Maria, is one of their wives. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Sweet lady. Maria is very sweet, but she doesn't speak English. So I actually showed her one thing you can do is download the Google Translate app. This is a this is an important point. So that if you're ever on a job site or if someone's coming over and you want to communicate and you're like, they're like, I don't understand. You can go ahead and what you can do is just pull up your Google Translate app and let me show you. I'm going to start talking and it's going to do it. So this is, you want to go into um, conversation mode and there's an English button and a Spanish button. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, I need you to fix that hole in the roof. Necesito que arregles ese agujero en el techo. Ah, they understand now. So then you touch the Spanish button, let them talk into it, and then it'll convert it into English. So it's a conversation mode. This is an invaluable app. As a matter of fact, a lot of my contractors actually have that on their phone. So if you have, you know, a couple of workers that are on site, they don't speak English well, and you need to get a point across instead of having to call someone, use this translator app. It's so good. Again, I would say probably 75% of the crews for the past four years that have come out to all my projects have been Hispanic. Most of them can speak English, but there are some people, you know, I'd like to come like Maria. She's a sweet lady. I'd like to say, hey, how you doing today, blah, blah, blah. And she actually, I showed it to her and she was like, oh, that's amazing. I said, yeah, you need to get this app. So I was just showing Maria the Google Translate app. Estaba mostrándole a María la aplicación Google Translate. Yes. Es muy bueno. Muy buena aplicación. Necesitamos instalarlo nosotros. Anyways, here we go. I'll mix up a bunch of video and then maybe I'll show you this crazy green grass I got out here. Isn't this crazy? <laughs> so the other thing I almost forgot to do, these uh, pancake lights have an adjustment on them on a Kelvin scale. So 5,000 is really bright white and blue, and you go all the way down to 2,700, which is very, very yellow. 
So there's a little switch, see that right here? It shows blue versus red. I'm going all the way up to the furthest one and then one click down. That's what I'm doing on those. So you gotta do those, because sometimes you won't be able to reach them. Once that sheetrock gets up, you may not be able to reach in and actually see that switch. So if you have these pancake lights and they're being installed, ask your installer to switch them to whatever you want. The majority of these lights should probably be somewhere in the middle to the warmer side. Can lights typically look better warmer unless it's a very contemporary setting, then you want it bright white. So anyways. It kind of concerns me a little bit because of the spray foam, all the spray foam I got, the electricians. I mean, that's only barely an inch, maybe even three quarters. So normally, I don't think you'd really worry about electrical wires, more so plumbing, but these are the little stud protector plates that basically you just put on. And no one can drill or shoot a nail into here. So they're cheap and I keep a bunch of them around now just in case. Even on a double stud, you can put it on a double stud as long as you space it correctly. So that's what I'm doing. I'm basically putting them wherever there's a wire that they could possibly hit and I'm putting these protector plates on. So let me give you one other tip. What I've done today is I've gone through and I've taken pictures before my sheet rockers come. I've taken pictures of every wall on here so I know where all my plumbing is, all my wiring is. I know where everything is before they cover this up. It's a real good idea and take those pictures and email them to yourself and put a star on it and put save inside photos or something so that you always have them. So two years later, without having to take off sheetrock and whatever, you know where that stuff is, you can access it. First of all, this video is brought to you by Green Shocker fertilizer <laughs> dude is this crazy or what look at that here we are almost january 1st look at that perennial rye that is just gorgeous so yesterday i got some footage john came he cut this natural area he cut the back this is looking great and then we cut the pond frontage i'll show you that too but i'll walk over here real quick and i'll take you over to this cabin that were we brought it in bare basically just spray foamed which they did a horrible job on the spray foam you shouldn't spray foam unless you do it for a living. But let me just show you real quick the front. I hit this annual. Now, annual ryegrass is typically more of a lime green, but we put green chalker down here and we bumped this up yesterday. Man, doesn't that look fantastic? That's annual rye and we're cutting it high. We're cutting, we went to a, we were on a level three, we're on a level four now. That is just absolutely gorgeous. Even the natural area back here. So I put up that wood wall a couple days ago, then I stained it. You can see they're over here doing sheetrock work. It's a mess over here because everything's outside. Thank God we don't have a bunch of rain. Hopefully this heater is still on. <sighs> Feels good in here. Ooh, they got both heaters running. No wonder why it's nice and warm. So this looks different, doesn't it? If you've been following this project, look at that, isn't that cool looking? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these beams from the old tobacco barn, 1700s, and we're gonna run them right along here, right along here, and then we'll do a couple cross beams in here. This is gonna look great. I believe the color that we're gonna paint this sheetrock is probably gonna be a very light sage color. It'll go well with this stain color and it's just gonna, it'll just mellow it all out. It but. looks pretty out here, but it is cold. That wind is just ripping cold. So I'm gonna hop over here and give you just one more tip over here. There are, uh, two of them came back today. Maria and her husband, I think, came back and they're in here sanding probably. Yeah, they just left. What they probably did is they probably came in here and put another coat yeah, so they came up here, they sanded, and they put another coat. They skimmed on here. It's looking really good. So here's a good example. Um, one of you guys, I'm going to be putting a TV up here, and one of you guys reminded me it would be a good idea to put an outlet. So what I did was is I just ran 
I bought some 12, uh, 12-2 wire, bought a box, and then just ran it down here and stuck that wire out here. My electricians can actually hook that up. But here's an example. I have got, let me show you the pancake lights in case you've never seen them. These are actually can lights. They call them pancake lights, whatever you want to call them. It's LED and it's adjustable. So the main box is upside and the wiring is upside and you just plug this in and then these little hooks, these little hooks grab the sheetrock when you stick them in. We have those all over the house inside. They're really cool. Uh, these are Halo brand. But here's the problem. How far that wire is only so long up here. So my question is, is how long will that wire reach? So you just can't cut holes wherever you want. So what I did was I went down, I went to this seam right here before they put the sheetrock up and I measured and 21 inches, that wire will reach about 21 inches. I want it as down as far as possible because the roof is angled. So I know I can go to 21 inches and cut my hole with that special hole cutter. So basically I know, I took pictures, I know where these things are. As a matter of fact, I think they put marks on the wall right here. There's one, there's one, there's one. They've got some marks up on the wall. So now I can use that cutter. I can measure out 21, 22 inches and cut my holes. So my electricians will actually be able to install those and get to the wires and have the wires reach. Because if I decided to cut out here, the wire wouldn't reach. I'd be, I'd have to repair that patch and, or rewire or something. So it's the little details, taking pictures, doing some measurements, really sort of understanding where everything needs to go before this all gets done. Um, is there any other thing that I can think about? Oh, you need to, like when you're finishing your windows, do you want your, do you want your sheetrock to overlap here and sheetrock into this corner here, or are you gonna trim these out? So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim these out. So I just had them just run the sheetrock to here and then we'll come and we'll actually do a finishing trim on this. So you need to know, do you want a sheetrock around the corner? Same thing in here. Um, we're gonna put, we're gonna be putting a door on here. So I had them just stop the sheetrock here and I'll trim this out. And we're gonna build a little door. This is my hot water heater closet. And then we'll just put a couple movable shelves in here. And uh, so you'll be able to use this for shelves. You have a little door that opens, plus it has the hot water heater. And then we left this ceiling completely open. Got a little bit of cleanup work. You know, when you're throwing, when they're throwing mud around, don't be surprised. You're gonna get a little bit of splatter here and there. So you're gonna have to do a little cleanup work, touch up work, but overall it's looking really good. So they did an initial sanding. You can tell they came back in, they put a second coat of mud on here and uh, I'm pretty happy right now. It's starting to, starting to actually, it's starting to actually look like a livable space now. But because we've got, oh, I know what I wanted to show you. If you follow my channel, you'll understand that this was open up here and I actually had them close that off. So there's a little space over the roof, which is useless. So I just had them close that off. And now what I'll probably do is I'll throw maybe like a little LED light up in there and it'll be kind of a cool accent up in there. Um, I got to clean off. They've got some mud on those boards up there. I need to clean that off. I'll get a wire brush, clean that off. I had to touch up the color anyways. Um, but it looks like a plan is coming together pretty nicely. Let me step back and show you. So this is the overall perspective here. Looking really nice. Show you from this angle. Just so you can get a feel for it all. Ceiling fan, a black rustic ceiling fan with a light's gonna come down here. This will be, I've got kind of a really cool rustic sort of old antique chandelier that'll come down here above this little kitchenette. I'm happy, man. Anyways. Just do a little bit of thinking when you're doing this, I'm telling you, it'll pay off.